Hey everyone, I started Scorcher Toys about 20 years ago, partly because of this toy. This is Gakken's 120 scale armor mode only VR052F. It hit stores in the mid 80s and never saw repackaging as a Henshin Robo, Robotech, or knockoff of any sort. While you can show your support for this channel and find lots of fun current releases by clicking the link in the comments below to head to Big Bad Toy Store, the only way you can track down this toy is on the secondary market. A long time ago, I went scouring the internet for information on releases like this one to determine how much effort I should spend to make it part of my collection. But my success was pretty limited, so this channel exists to help you solve that problem. While there's nothing special about the makeup or functionality of the box, there are images on the back of two never-released prototypes. Curiously, the bike mode toy, which didn't have a prototype available when the box was made, was the only future release that made it to market. Between the creation of this box and the release of the bike mode only toy, the ZDC line, which I'm pretty sure means zinc diecast, died. Two production toys carry the ZDC label, this ride armor, and the 155 scale 2 mode transformation Legios. The later release of the bike mode only ride armor, absent the ZDC label, and made entirely of plastic, shows the quick pivot Gakken made towards toys for a younger audience. So the box is an interesting historical footnote, and inside you'll find a styrofoam tray housing the toy and a heavy gun. Presumably there was a sticker sheet, but I'm afraid I only own this one, and it must have already had the stickers applied. It's almost inappropriate to think of this as a toy, as it's really a metal statue with very limited articulation. You have the ability to pivot the arm forward. You could see that scratch on the bicep there. It'll come up and hit the housing. When the arm is forward, you might want to put the gun inside that hand. It just slides right into the fist, and it'll come down and stay in there decently well, no real issues to speak of. You can't twist the arm to make him look like he's firing his missiles, which I would say is a bit of a bummer. You do have these weird cavities if you look at the chest from either side, so that's a bit of a bummer. There's also screw holes that are pretty evident. The legs are slightly different color from the top of the body because those are painted metal, and I mean the entire boot is a big hunk of metal. You'll see that there is paint stripping off of that, and a big part of that problem is spending 30 years in styrofoam. Styrofoam's a little grabby when it comes to paint. From the side view, you can see that the hip guards have big splits at the seam. It seems to be a production issue. They put a sticker over it. Nothing seems to have changed since that sticker was applied. I think it was just an issue with manufacturing. There is a knee joint, but it's pretty much useless because there's no toe joint or anything you can do, and the toy will just want to fall down on you. Spinning it around, you can see it still looks good from the back. There's a, some sort of a manufacturer stamp up here. The odd thing about this toy is that it has the ability to bring the wheels down. I don't know why you would ever need that. They're nice and stiff though. They stay up right where they're supposed to. So that's good. And you can see that bar is also metal. That's really the only metal for the top part. If you're wondering how this compares to some other toys you might own, here is a Matchbox Scott Bernard figure. And it is making a good case for why a non-transformable ride armor figure should exist. It, it makes you wonder really why Gakken, or why Matchbox didn't just buy an entirely and make their figure a full ride armor instead of giving it partial ride armor attributes. It's just this is this feels like someone made either a ride armor or a Scott Bernard figure and never watched the show, or this feels like a product of someone who really cared for the design, but had limited resources for how much fun they could make the final product. Now you might be thinking, Gakken should have made this toy transform. And they kinda did. Here's what this toy looks like standing next to Gakken's 120 scale transformable ride armor. As you can see, the transformable effort was not good. You can also see the metal really did add some heft as this toy weighs almost three times as much as the transformable version. From a line art perspective, since this toy doesn't transform and has almost no articulation, maybe it could have been better, but for the era it's pretty good. 
To boil it down, this toy is neat to own because it doesn't look awful, it's loaded with metal, and it's a physical manifestation of the inflection point where Gakken went from shooting for the moon to trying to recoup losses. For anyone who doesn't put a lot of value on those things, it's an easy pass. Check out anymoon.com for the full article, subscribe, and thanks for watching.